Hey guys, welcome to a new Flutter tutorial video. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be talking about validating forms and input boxes and how we can get the state from an entire block of widgets inside of a Flutter application. To get started, let's just create a skeleton application. Just defining a class called MyApp, which extends stateless widget. And then we're creating the build function. We're returning our material application widget, giving it a title of input boxes. Then we're giving it a theme data with a primary swatch of colors.indigo. And then we're pointing home at another object, which is called input box. Our input box class will extend the stateful widget class. And naturally we need to override the create state function for this class, as well as create another class, which will extend the state with this class inside of it. We override the create state function and we're pointing it towards input box state. And then we're taking input box state and we're extending the state with our input box class inside of it. There are a few global variables that we want to create for this particular class. The first one will be a Boolean called logged in and we'll set this equal to false by default. This is just to check to see if the user is logged in or not. And then we'll create three strings, one called username, one called email and one called password. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this at any point in another tutorial or not, but if you put an underscore before a variable or before a function inside of Dart, that variable or function is then considered to be private. So in other words, these variables are scoped to this class and can't be accessed outside of this class. So that's just a little tip that I figured I might as well let you guys know. If you're wondering why I was using underscores in other contexts, that would be why. All right, so now let's build our build function. With this build function, we want to return a scaffold and we'll give our scaffold an app bar. We'll give it a title of text that will just say form example. Then after this, we'll have a body of a padding widget. And of course, because we don't have our padding property, it's throwing an error. So if we put in our padding property, that error goes away. Our padding will be edge insets.all with 10.0 inside of it. This will give us padding all around the entire widget. And then our child will be a form. This is the start of where we're going to have all of the input boxes that we want as well as the button. And you can see that the form itself is throwing an error because the form needs to have a child. So in this case, we'll give it a child of a column because we want all of our input boxes to be vertical. And then for the children property of our column, we'll put in our various text form field widgets. So we want to have three text form fields because we have three different fields that we want to pass through. And then we'll have a raised button at the end. Let's start with our email text form field. There is a property called autocorrect and we can set it either to true or false. And this will tell Android whether or not it should use autocorrection inside of this particular text box. We want it to be false because we're typing in an email address. Then we have what's called decoration. This allows us to add various things to our input box, like a label, hint text, and stuff like that. In this case, we're just going to add label text. It's just going to say email with a colon after it, and this will appear above our text box. And then we have two important functions that we want to implement. The first one is called the validator function, and the second one is called the onSaved function. The validator function, as its name is implied, is a function that helps validate this form item. In both cases, both of these functions take in the string. And with the case of our validator, if it outputs a null, then the input box is valid. If it outputs something else, then this is considered an error. For our email validator, what we'll do is we'll check to see if str or our string contains an at sign. And if it does not, see we're negating it. If it does not, then it says not a valid email. If it does, then we pass back null. Therefore, the validation has passed. For our onSaved function, we'll just take our string and then we'll set it into our email global variable. And if you had a database, you could add the database into this particular function. If you were pinging an API, maybe you'd run some kind of HTTP post on this particular function. So now let's build out the rest of our form fields. Our username form field is going to be fairly similar to our email form field. You can see here we set the auto correction to false and then our decoration rather than saying email colon, we'll say username colon. 
Our validator will be different in that we check the string length and we check to see if it's less than or equal to five. And if it's less than or equal to five, then we pass out not a valid username. Otherwise we pass back null. In other words, we want our usernames to either be six characters or longer. And of course we could make more complicated validators, but in this case, we're just going to keep them fairly simple. Then for the unsaved function, we're just going to take our string and then set it into our username variable. Our password is going to be slightly different than the other two. So we still have our autocorrection to false. We have the decoration just says password colon. We're checking for length seven or below. And if it is equal to seven or below, then we pass back not a valid password. Otherwise we pass back null. So we want our password to be at least eight characters long. And then our on saved is just setting the string into our password. The place where this is different, however, is we're using a box called obscure text and we're setting this equal to true. And what this will do is it will obscure the password text and make it into asterisks or rather dots so that you cannot see the password as it's being typed in. For our raised button, we're just going to add a child text widget called submit and then our unpressed function will just be empty for now. So we have these three text form fields inside of our form as well as our button and we need to get the state of all of these widgets so how do we go about doing that well each flutter widget has what's called a key the key essentially acts as a unique id for the widget itself and we can create what's called a global key so that we can actually gain access to various properties of our widget and the children of that widget so up here where we have all of our global variables we can come in here and we can create a global key that will allow us to access our form state. So here you see we're creating a final variable called form key and this form key is getting the global key and the global key specifically has our form state inside of it. Now to actually wire this up to our form we have to come in here and specifically set the key property to our form key. And this will make it so that our form and everything inside of it will be referred to by this unique global key that we've created. Now let's drop down below our build function and let's create a onPressed function that we can then put into our onPressed listener and have it actually grab all the form state and then save it. So this will just pass back nothing, so we'll make it void. We can sort of alias our form key dot current state by turning it into a variable called form. And this will just be used to make it easier for us to write things out. And then we can call form dot validate. And what this will do is it will iterate through all of the validator functions inside of our text form field elements and run them. And it will check to see if we're getting back null or if we're getting back our error. If we're getting back our error, then it will return false. And if we're getting back null for all of them, then it will return back true. So we can use this as a Boolean value. And we can say if form validate do something. If form validate will check to see if all of the elements validate properly. And if they do, we get back true and then we run some code. The piece of code that we want to run is form.save. And this will iterate through all of our on saved functions which of course will put our input into our global variables. Okay, so now let's put on pressed into our on pressed event and let's run this and we can take a look at what's going on with our application. To just put in the function, you just say on pressed and then you just put in on pressed without parentheses because you don't want it to execute as soon as the widget is created. All right, so now let's run this in our emulator and take a look at what we have. Now remember we are using Dart 2, so you need to type in flutter run dash dash preview dash Dart dash 2 to run the application. Okay, so now our application has finished compiling and is now inside of our emulator. You can see that our, each of our input boxes has a label and we can type inside of it. Now if we just hit submit, you can see we get all of our errors. So for the email, it says not a valid email. For the username, it says not a valid username. And for the password, it says not a valid password. Now, even if we fill out two of these with the appropriate items, 
the other one will still not validate appropriately if it doesn't have the correct thing inside of it. So each one validates independent of the others. If we do, however, put in values that do validate and we hit submit, nothing will happen because we haven't really set up anything. So all that happens right now is everything is getting pushed into those global variables, but we have no way of actually seeing what the values of these global variables are. So there are two things that we want to do with this application. We want to make sure that this application knows that it's logged in appropriately. So if all the validators come back as true and form validate comes back as true, then we want to change our logged in Boolean to true. And then we want to push forward to a home page that will display hello username, whatever the username is. We also want to make it so that we append a snack bar to the bottom of our scaffold, which will pop up with the username the password and the email inside of it so that we can see what was typed into the boxes. Like with our form key, we can create a main key, which is a global key that points towards our scaffold state. The scaffold state being the state inside of our entire scaffold object. We put our main key into the key property of our scaffold. We also want to come down to where our form is being created and we want to put in a tenerary operator so that it will change based on the value of our logged in Boolean value. So we type in logged in equals false and then we put a question mark and then we have our form and then where our form ends we put in a colon and then we want to put in the page layout that we want to sort of show if we log in. And I'm just going to put a center with a child of a column, and this column will have text as well as a button inside of it. Our text will say welcome username, and we can use string interpolation. You just put a dollar sign and then the variable, and this will automatically insert the variable in a string format into our string. And then we'll have a raised button, which will have the text of logged out on it and the unpressed event for now will be empty, but we'll make it so that it changes the login back to false. All right, so if we go back down to our unpressed function, we can now implement some of this logic to make this work properly. If we just were to go in here and type in logged in equals true, this would not actually work because our user interface and our widget tree will not actually recognize that this Boolean has changed value until we hot reload the application. So we need to use the set state function for it to recognize that something has happened with the state. And of course our set state function also takes in a function. And in this case, we're just gonna give it an anonymous function. And inside of it, we'll just type in logged in equals true. So now our entire widget tree will recognize that logged in was changed to true and then it will change appropriately. If we hot reload and then we hit submit, you can see here is now our login page. If we click log out, nothing will happen however. And that's because we haven't created the set state function for this either. So again, like before, we need to call the set state function so that it will recognize that the logged in variable has changed. And we'll just make it so that when you push this button, it will then set the logged in variable to false. So if we perform a hot reload and then we click log out, it will now go back to our form. Now let's make use of our main key and then create a snack bar, which we can then append to the bottom of our scaffold. So to do this, we're just going to create a variable called snack bar. And then of course we'll instantiate a new snack bar widget. And inside of the snack bar, we'll give it content, which will be of type text. And the text will have our username, our email, and our password in it. And we'll just use string interpolation for this. We also want to give our snack bar a duration. So to do this, we create a new duration object. I'm going to give it 500 milliseconds, so it exists for five seconds. Normally you'd want it to be slower, but this is just for testing purposes so that you guys can see it properly. And then after our snack bar has been created, we just want to call main key and we want to get the current state of the main key. And then we want to call the show snack bar method on the main key current state. And we want to pass in our snack bar. And this will then append a snack bar to our scaffold. All right, so now I've performed a full restart on our application by pushing shift R. We can put in our values. So now I have an email, a username, and a password in here. And if I hit submit, you can see a snack bar appears at the bottom. 
and we also get our logged in page. We can log out by clicking the log out and it comes back to our form. So as you can see, these global keys are pretty powerful. They allow us to get the state and they allow us to manipulate the elements from outside of the elements based on whatever it is that we want to do with these elements. So in this case, we're just appending a snack bar to the bottom of our scaffold, but we could also do a lot of other things like add more text boxes to our form, or maybe even remove a text box from our form if we wanted to based on another set of circumstances. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked the video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. I hope you have a good day.